this legitimately might be the best value hi-fi speaker available today. And I don't say that lightly. I think if you watch enough of my videos, you know I don't really do clickbait stuff. And I try not to speak out of turn. You know, there are speakers that I do like, and maybe I do like more, but <laughs> they're more expensive. These speakers, the March Sowentuva AWG, for about $4,000 a pair, I don't believe that ship, so I'll have to add shipping. US dollars. These things are legit. The first track that I listened to was Daft Punk's Give Life Back to Music. If, you've, if you're familiar with that album, then you probably know that song pretty well because it comes out swinging out the gates. It's just solid bass. I tested this speaker's previous version a couple years ago, and that was the one thing that I liked was that for a bookshelf speaker, it had a lot of bass capability. It dug really low, and I was wondering, does this one perform just as well? I didn't really have a reason to believe that it wouldn't, but I will tell you that I forgot just how awesome it is to have sub-bass territory out of a bookshelf speaker. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to get 30 hertz at full tilt out of these speakers, but I am saying that 40 hertz out of these speakers at a pretty high volume is certainly achievable. You can get 30 hertz in room with some boundary gain reinforcement, but don't expect that it's going to rattle your teeth. We're not talking home theater levels here. I am talking more along the lines of about 80 decibels to about 85 decibels at 10 feet away in a room that is about 14 by 18 feet with about nine foot ceilings. Now using a NAD C3050 amplifier, which I currently have on loan to review, that amplifier provides about 100 watts rated max power at 4 ohm and 8 ohm. Actually, I think I measured it to be somewhere closer to around 120, but don't quote me on that just yet. I'll say that with that power available, the output was adequate, but you will probably need more power if you plan to listen at louder levels or you have a larger room or you're sitting further away. I think in my situation, I'm kind of parked right there in the middle of around where most people are going to be. I imagine most people might have a room that's a similar size as mine, or you might have a larger room. If you have a smaller room, then you're in luck. 100 watts per channel is all you're gonna need. But yes, let me get a little bit more detailed about this. These speakers are super neutral. Now. You've got to listen to them at about seven degrees above the tweeter axis, which is going to be weird to most people because what that means is that typical bookshelf stands are going to be too tall. I would recommend that if you're looking at these speakers to use bookshelf stands, that will put the speaker height at around 24 inches. I think that's a kind of a, a typical size that you can order or a typical height that you can order for bookshelf stands. I would look at those. You're going to want to be around that height off the floor to make sure that your ear is at the correct angle above the tweeter line. Because if you don't, what will happen is you'll get some high frequency, mid frequency scooping going on and things won't sound quite as dynamic, won't sound quite as attacky, if that's a word. But when you are at the correct axis, about seven degrees above the tweeter line, holy cow, I went through so much music. And, and matter of fact, I've got notes on my phone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some, some splice editing here. I'm just gonna read from my phone what I heard. These speakers dig deep. As I said, I started off with the Daft Punk track, Give Life Back to Music, and it just comes out. Now I crank these speakers up to the maximum output capability of that NAD amplifier around, let's say 100 watts at about four ohm. You've gotta be careful because if you have too much power to these speakers, you can actually damage your hearing. I'm not trying to be sensational, but there's a lot of truth to that. Now think about most speakers that you listen to. When you're listening to them at rather loud levels, they start to distort. They start to give up and you start to hear nastiness in the mid range and the higher frequency and it hurts your ears. Not just because it's loud, but because it sounds bad. These speakers are so low in distortion that you don't 
really, I don't notice it at least with all of the music that I listen to. So you've got to be careful. I say 100 watts will probably be adequate for a small to medium sized room. And if you're in a larger room, just be mindful of how loud you're listening because it's easy to get carried away with the volume knob since there is no real indicator in terms of distortion that you're listening to the speakers extremely loud. And in that regard, I would equate them in some ways to pro audio speakers because pro audio speakers are dangerous for the same reason. Now, the sensitivity of the speaker is rather low. It's close to about 82 decibels at 2.83 volts, one meter. That's about three decibels below the typical bookshelf sized speaker, which for those of you who don't know, 3 dB is typically a doubling of power. If you go from 50 watts to 100 watts, that's three decibels in output. If you go 25 to 50 watts, that's three decibels in output. When you're trying to make up the difference in overall SPL and you're coming from maybe a standard bookshelf speaker that has about 85 decibel sensitivity to these, you might need to think about the power that you're going to be able to deliver. But again, I just caution you to not listen too loudly because I caught myself listening to pretty high levels for a little bit longer than I should have. Nothing stood out about these speakers, and I say that in the most positive way. When I review speakers, it's actually easier for me to review a bad speaker because I can start pointing out the flaws, and that gives me things to talk about. When a speaker is really good, the way that I review speakers, I don't like to use a lot of fancy buzzwords, so it's hard for me to come up with ways to basically fill time, fill airspace, and say X, Y, or Z sounded X, Y, or Z. I'll just tell you frankly that these speakers are very neutral. And my favorite part was that I was able to listen to so many genres of music without ever feeling fatigued, without ever feeling like I wanted more bass, without ever feeling that I needed more attack, more slam, more punch, more smoothness in a vocal, more warmth. Whatever the track has on it, whatever the source material has on it, these speakers pretty much stick to that. So if you listen to good source material, you're going to have good sound. If you listen to source material that has some issues, you're probably going to notice those issues. One of my favorite things about listening to this speaker was going back and listening to Thriller. Thriller is an all-time classic for me. If you don't like it, that's fine. But for me, I grew up listening to it. I was born in 82, the same year that Thriller came out. I think it was December of 82. And I mean, it just was all over the radio, all over the house. We had multiple copies of the vinyl. I still got mine from when I was a child. I love that album. And every time I get to hear it on a good setup, it really does something to me in the nostalgic perspective where I just, you feel like you're taken back in time to a point where you can just appreciate the music and relax and enjoy it. Now, Thriller has so many little intricate details in practically every single song from the songs that Toto helped write, actually worked on to songs that it was just Michael singing on and nobody else did any work on, well, except for his producer. The layers and the intricate details stand out so well on this speaker. Depth, little things about Michael's voice being overdubbed on top of himself, hi-hat cymbals placed in different locations in the soundstage that, yeah, you can hear them with other speakers, but they don't seem to have that same energy or that same gravity that a good speaker like these March Audio speakers give. And I think that's probably the highest compliment that I can pay to these particular speakers or any good speaker in general is just that I enjoyed my time listening to music on these speakers. So now let's take a look at the data because I don't know what else I'm going to say other than this speaker is really awesome. But I want you to see the data because I think you're going to be really impressed by what you see. The data that you are about to see is captured using the Clipple Near Field Scanner. It is a state-of-the-art robotic device that allows you to get anechoic data in a non-anechoic room, such as my garage, which you see in this video, or where it actually is right now, which is literally in my dining room. You're not gonna see a video of that. Starting with the impedance, this speaker has a low impedance. I definitely would recommend a four ohm capable amplifier with this particular speaker. This is the mean sensitivity at about 82 decibels, and you can see that its tolerance band is within about 1.6 to 1.73 decibels. That's extremely, extremely good. F3 is at 40 hertz. This thing's gonna have plenty of bass in your room. F10 at 30 hertz. So once it starts rolling off below 40 hertz, it falls off pretty rapidly. Will you need a subwoofer? 
here's my take. Okay. This is my opinion. I think that if you're buying this speaker, you should buy it with intent to use it basically full range. This is not an SPL monster because it does have low sensitivity, although it can get loud. Now, I've already talked about that. If you have music content that has bass below, strong bass below 40 hertz, and when I say strong, I mean a lot of bass, then you're probably going to need a subwoofer. But if you're doing that, and if you're listening to speakers that are that if you're demanding that much output from your speakers, then I don't think that I would recommend you spend $4,000 on this speaker. I think I would recommend that you go buy maybe a $1,000 tower speaker or something like that, or $2,000 pair of tower speakers, and then get a subwoofer to go along with it because those SPL levels are going to be easier to achieve. If you're looking for hi-fi out of a budget bookshelf speaker with basically full range, this is your speaker. If you're looking for home theater output levels that dig down to 20 hertz, this isn't your speaker. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't go off and get a 15-inch or a 12-inch subwoofer to go along with this speaker. I just personally think that if you're going to do that, then this speaker probably isn't the right speaker for you. CEA 2034 data set, look at it. It looks great. Yeah, you have a directivity mismatch right here, but that's due to the tweeter midwoofer separation. Okay. Estimated in-room response. Look at this. Look how smooth this is. Normally, I will draw a little blue line and say, this is how I heard the speaker, and this is why I thought the speaker sounded shouty or bright or cupped or nasally or hollow or boomy or resonant. I'll, I'll kind of give those subjective descriptors, descriptors. In this case, I don't have that because this speaker sounds neutral, and that blue line would just cover up this black line right here. That'd be it. I didn't mention earlier, but I want to mention it now. I'm showing this description here. I do recommend that you have the speakers out about three feet from the wall. Yes, you could push them closer to the wall if you wanted to. But in my opinion, I think these speakers are much better served being pulled out from the wall three feet or so. I mean, if you needed to go two feet and you couldn't go beyond that, okay. But if you give these speakers room to breathe, you're going to be really impressed. Horizontal radiation is about plus or minus 60 degrees up to about three kilohertz where it starts to narrow up. This goes back to what I was talking about earlier where I said that I prefer a speaker that has wider radiation throughout the higher frequency area, but that does come at a cost. So depending on the design, there's going to be trade-offs. This is a trade-off of this particular speaker. I don't really have an issue with it per se. In an ideal world, it would be wider throughout, but I'm okay with it as it is. Vertical window is tight. Remember, I said that the reference axis is about seven degrees above that tweeter line. So make sure that you keep that in mind when you're looking at this graphic. I, basically, just stay about seven degrees above that tweeter line and try not to go too far above or below that if you can. Harmonic distortion at 86 decibels and at 96 decibels. On the low end, yes, you do increase above about 3% at around 50 hertz or so, 60 hertz actually. That's normal and I'm okay with that. But I really wanna point out this region right through here. I mean, look how low the distortion is in the mid range. These are purify drivers. I mean, it's the purify drivers are just world-class. Multi-tone distortion is kind of high in this one to two kilohertz area. It's above my personal 3% threshold, but I didn't really have an issue with these particular speakers when I was listening to them. I didn't hear that. now. Maybe I would notice it depending on some other kind of music that I'm listening to. But for my listening, I didn't have an issue with this particular thing. It's good data to have though. If you use a crossover at 80 Hertz, this is what you get. Like I said earlier, if you're going to cross these speakers over at 80 Hertz, save money, get cheaper speakers and get subwoofers and be done. Don't buy these speakers, which are intended to be played down to 40 or 50 Hertz at the least and then try to cross them over at 80. To me, that just, that's kind of a waste of money. It doesn't really seem to fit the purpose of these speakers. It's my opinion. Compression data does show that at the highest output level, you do run out of steam around 60, 70 Hertz or so. But in my listening with hundred Watts on these speakers at around 85 decibels of typical average output, 10 feet away, 14 by 18 by nine foot room, I only ran into this issue when I was listening to music that was really bassy, like 30 to 40 hertz bass music, rap music. So I don't think that it's going to be an issue for the majority of people if you're listening to it at 
reasonable levels. You know, as I said earlier, it's hard to review a really good speaker because it's hard to find words to justify what the experience is with them. I will just say that if you're shopping for a good set of bookshelf speakers in the four thousand U.S. dollar price range, you definitely need to have these speakers on your list. I would probably consider them top three at least, and that's without me going back and looking at everything. You know, I was asked why I didn't put these on my top five speakers of all time, or I should say, why I didn't put the previous version on my top five speakers of all time, and and the reason is. The narrowing and the higher frequency, I personally like a speaker that is wider and stays about plus or minus 60, maybe plus or minus 70 degrees through the mid-range and upper treble. But you've got to balance the frequency response on axis with wide radiating speakers. So there's a trade-off there. They're like any other speaker, there's always a trade-off. And for that particular reason, I did not put those speakers in my top five of all time. But I'm telling you now, having heard these again, I really probably should reevaluate that. I've listened to a lot of great speakers, and I'm not saying that these are going to be at the top of the leaderboard, but I am without a shadow of a doubt saying that if these are in your price range and you're shopping, please put them on your list. If for no other reason, then you just need to listen to them. You need to be able to listen to them. They're going to impress the heck out of you. The bass is phenomenal. The output capability, the low distortion, the neutrality these speakers have, everything that you could possibly want out of a bookshelf speaker, and they actually beat the snot out of some floor standing speakers. I forgot to end the video with that. Now I'm going to have to edit back in just the ending. I appreciate you all watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I will talk to you all later. Take care. Peace.